We are crossing live to Absrod Oval, where the Scott father will speak to the press. I heard that he is in a grumpy mood. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel and thank you for joining. Now in today's episode, we're going to do the Thursday night and the Friday night press conference all in one. Just come down. Okay, now I didn't do the Thursday night press conference because uh, Collingwood versus the Brisbane Lions, we don't have any players. Uh, I think there's only one and... and he was sort of 50-50, um, uh, but we'll talk about him in a minute. So I sort of kept this, um, I didn't want to do a two-minute press conference, so I, I waited for the uh, Friday games to happen, and boy, did we have some games. Let's get into them. We now start off with the Thursday night game. Uh, it was the Brisbane Lions against Collingwood. Now, at the Brisbane Lions, um, uh, we don't have any players, okay? We don't have nobody. Uh, I, I don't even... I haven't even seen any team that has anybody. So, if we go through them, the only players of interest here are uh, Lockie Neal and Zorko. Now, with Zorko, he's playing a halfback role. He actually looks really good. Uh, but the problem with Zorko is uh, we don't know uh, how many minutes he plays per game because he can break down any minutes. And he's one of the players that really breaks down. So... Uh, enter at your own risk if you want Zorko. Um, I'm not touching him, okay? Uh, I won't go anywhere near Zorko. Uh, there are much better options. Uh, I know a few of you that saw Zorko. Actually, um, one of my opponents, uh, actually not playing against me, but I saw someone playing against an opponent that had Zorko. <laughs> he must be the only one. Anyway, uh, any other players of interest at Brisbane Lions? Well, there was one player that didn't turn up, he got dropped, uh, and people were very upset, Lions. Now, uh, there's rumours going around at Brisbane right now, and this is not from me, this is actually out in the open, the rumours, that a lot of these players, they went on a trip to uh, Las Vegas, and um, a few of them had, like, uh, did some naughty stuff, okay, and it was no good. And uh, and their wives have left them. It's become chaos. It's just all come out in the open just recently. So there's a bit of drama happening right now at Brisbane Lions. So we don't know what's going to happen. So anyway, uh, that's the Brisbane Lions. And uh, now we go to Collingwood. And let me show you a tweet. I put up a tweet uh, because there was news that McRae might be playing and Dacos might go to half back. So there was breaking news from Absrod Oval. Uh, this was on Thursday. And I said, if McRae from Collingwood plays a full game tonight and scores 80 plus, uh, then we will not be bringing in Tom Powell. Okay, so Tom Powell is not going to come in and we're going we're to stick with the Guns and Rookies theme. So this is what we're going to do. We're, gonna, we're already going to take out McKercher. Uh, sorry, we're already going to take out, uh, uh, bring in McKercher and bring in Sherry. Uh, but we're also going to bring in uh, over here Tom Powell. But we made a change and Ollie Wines was going to go out and Butters was going to come in. And I was going to do this if I saw an 80 plus from McRae because then I wouldn't need Powell because I've already got a four that could score 80 plus. I was very excited. I couldn't wait to watch McRae play. Okay. And here's what happened. Well, Finn McRae, he started, played in the midfield. It was a great role. He scored 30 in nearly two and a half quarters. Uh, had six touches. Uh, it was terrible. It was a spud. Okay, Finn McRae is a big spud. Uh, so I, I didn't get him, okay. So the plan was uh, scrapped, and we ended up keeping wines. We can't get butters. And we have to bring in Powell, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, all eyes were on Dacos. And he wasn't performing, okay, at half time, uh, he was struggling, he was on like 20 odd, uh, then it, then everything changed, he, the, he, he flicked the switch, okay, went into half back, in the last quarter, he went nuts, and um, McRae, uh, Dacos is back, now if you traded him out, because uh, a few people did, 
uh, I recommend you you um, look forward and getting back as soon as possible. Okay, he might cop a tag this week, so you can still wait. And then he has a buy coming up, so you can still wait. But you're going to need him because he's got that role in half back and he's, he looks like a gun again. So uh, that's the story of Dacos. Now, there's another story going on with Jordan Dagoe. Uh, he's had three scores out of four in the few, under 60, okay? Four scores under 60. Uh, something's happened to the goey now. I don't know what's happening. So we, may be able, we might be able to pick him up uh, really cheap as a spare. Uh, but then again, do we really want him, okay? I mean, if he's going to score 55s, who, who wants him anyway? So just come a deal. It was just a thought or, or a thought. Anyway, let's get to the next game. We go to North Melbourne and Carlton, and um, uh, Powell, I was very nervous at the start of the game. Uh, I still, I was actually considering changing my mind, okay? I was still going to get somebody else, uh, but I just kept it, because I promised myself no last-minute changes this year, okay? No, nothing going to change on game day, because every time I do a change on game day, uh, it shambles, okay? Everything goes wrong, so I keep it as it is. Uh, whatever decision I make, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, we leave it at that. And lucky I did because uh, Tom Powell uh, scored 92 points, had 29 possessions, went at 69%. Now, Tom Powell, the last two weeks, went at 85%. Uh, so this is actually a floor game for him, uh, scoring a 92. So I was very impressed. And it looks like he could be a keeper. Now, if you missed him and, and didn't get Tom Powell, like I nearly did, I nearly missed him, uh, what would you do? Um, I don't know what to tell you, okay, because you're going to pay probably 60k extra for him now. He had a break even of, of minus 48. Uh, then he added, added another 92 on top of that, 48 plus 92. That's 140, so 60k. It's roughly about 60k he made. So... I, would, I don't know what to tell you now. Maybe he's still cheap. Maybe you still can get him. Okay, something to think about. Now, Sheezel uh, is a gun. Uh, 128. Um, if you don't have Sheezel, you've got to try, do anything to get him. He's, he's going to be top three midfield uh, defender this year. Uh, Sheezel must have. Now, Tristan Sherry. Uh, something uh, happened in the first quarter. Uh, the, they forgot to give him points. He didn't score. He was on seven points at quarter time. I, I couldn't come a day. I was angry. Okay, but anyway, uh, they fixed it, okay? And uh, he went to 90 at the end, so I'm happy with that. Uh, although I would have wanted 100, uh, 90 was enough considering how bad he started. So 90 was good enough. It wasn't his best game. Three, uh, he had um, seven clangers. Well, in those seven clangers, five were frees against. So that's what... The, that's Ken as a clanger when you got five free kicks against. So he's lost, what, 15? Uh, he's lost 28 points on clangers, okay? So he's lost a lot of points. He could have been a lot better. Now, uh, going further down, uh, McKercher, uh, 74. I mean, I didn't get his two good scores. I ended up getting the 74, but it's still good enough. Uh, for, for a rookie, scoring 70, he's going he's gonna to make cash, okay? So that's his job. Uh, and plus, he's going to have DPP soon, so we're happy with McCurcher's score. Even though it was only a 74, it's still okay. Uh, next to him, the fish. Okay, now, uh, I told you from the start, he's a con artist, uh, the fish. Okay, we even brought him on the show, the con artist. Now, uh, scored a 70, uh, uh, it's not good enough, okay? He's, he's in your forward line, a 400k player, scoring 70s, um, you've got to let him go. Okay, uh, just say goodbye to him. Kick him out of the door. He might score you a 100 like he did last week. And give, con you again, and then you're going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep him. He's good, but he's not. He's lying to you. He's a con artist. Just come a deal. Anyway, uh, the fish has to go. The interesting one here is LDU. Uh, scored 67. Had 27 touches. He actually looked okay. <laughs> he didn't look that bad. But... Um, the problem for him, uh, the whole team, contested possessions, eight for LDU. Oh, that's not enough. Uh, you had Powell having nine. Uh, Wardlaw, ten. I mean, Powell had as many as Wardlaw. <laughs> Work that out. P 
Chappelle had more than um, uh, LDU. And yeah, Lazaro, another one, uh, expensive rookie, 180k, scoring 64s. You can get the 123k, is the one I got from the shipment from China. Uh, they're scoring, they're actually scoring more. So, Lazaro, if you cashed him out, good on you. If you got him still, just wait till you cash him out. As soon as you see somebody, just grab him and, and get rid of him. He's not going to make much cash. And, uh, and that's pretty much it uh, for North Melbourne. With, with LDU, keep an eye on him. His price is going to drop. Uh, hopefully, we'll get him a lot cheaper because he started at over 600 k So, we could probably get him really cheap soon. Um, yeah, let's continue. We now go to Carlton. Now, at Carlton, um, Harry Mackay, I've seen a few people get him in. He's quite a 137. Uh, Jets. Now, I, I would say... Uh, if you've got him, you've done well, okay, G- uh, good luck, okay, you've done really well, uh, if you had to choose between Mackay or Powell, Powell only scored 92, but I'm actually happy with the 92, uh, if I had the same decision again, and I saw that Mackay was going to score 137, and Powell was going to score 92, I will still take Powell's 92, because I know that Powell can be a keeper, whereas Mackay, he can be a keeper, uh, he's had a massive preseason and a good start to the year, uh, but we know Mackay can be very up and down. So, but at the moment, he's on fire, okay? Once he reaches a big amount of dollars, I'd cash him out, okay? That's what I would do. Then buy him back cheap again. Now, going down, okay, uh, at Carlton, is there anyone else of interest? Uh, Crips not this year. Uh, who else is here of interest? Well, there there wasn't many, is there? There, there was one boy, uh, where is he, Carol? Scored a 65. Uh, that's that's good enough for us. We're happy with that. I mean, 123k rookie scoring 65. Last week he scored 70. Uh, he's he's going to make some cash. Okay, so we're very happy with Carroll. And Zach Williams scored a 70. I mean, we, we want more, but we can't complain. It's 200k. I mean, Zach Williams scoring a 70, similar to what a uh, McCurcher scoring a 74. The similar price. So we're not complaining. With Zach. If he can score 70, we're still happy. Now, we go to Frio and Adelaide. Now, this was a big game for a lot of us, okay? Because Frio is very super coach relevant, and we're all on edge, okay, when we watch this game. Even at Adelaide, we got all of us have players in this game, okay? There'll be no one out there that doesn't have a player that didn't play in this game, and we're all on edge. We, we want to see our players perform, okay? That, we're the coaches. That's our job. Now, uh, at the first quarter, uh, Matt Crouch, who was on six points, and uh, to make things worse, Caleb Sarong was on about 12 points. Uh, the two of them, between them, were 18 points. I was so upset. Okay, then I put up a tweet. Now, I put up a tweet. I was for Sarong and Crouch. I said, do something. I was so upset. Uh, well, Crouch, in an, in an, actually, between them, Sarong went to 60 and Crouch went to 66 at half time. Crouch was on six points. He went to 66. Sarong did, did nearly the same thing. But not as good. It was crazy. I think my new shipment of guitars, um, these are the better quality ones. I didn't get these from China. I got them from Thailand. Okay, I got the better versions. Just come and deal. Now, some of you would have traded out uh, Hayden Young, and I don't blame you, okay? Uh, in his two games that he played, in total, he scored 132 points in the two games. Well, <laughs> this week he scored 132 points in just one game. Uh, but... That was one of his best games he would have played. Um, he, he, it was probably the best game he's ever played, okay? So uh, don't expect that kind of game from Hayden Young every single week. And uh, if you traded him out, uh, I did it myself in round one. I traded him out. Okay, I've got no regrets. I mean, the player I traded him out to is, is Luke Ryan. Uh, Luke Ryan still scored 130. And Luke Ryan uh, just had an average game, okay? It wasn't like one of his best games. But it was just a normal game, whereas Hayden Young had one of his best games to score the 132. So if you went Young to Ryan, uh, don't have any regrets because um, Young won't do this every week. Okay, we, we've seen it. We've seen two scores. Now, uh, we've already talked about Ryan. Uh, he, he's a point scoring magnet. Okay, he just scores for fun. Okay, if he doesn't have points, he'll get angry and, and he'll, he'll demand the ball. They'll kick it to him. They, then he gets his points. He scored 50 points in the last quarter. He was on 80. He scored 50 points. He went crazy. And 
Sarong, well, he had, he had a very quiet first quarter, as, as we mentioned, but then he picked up, okay? So 125, uh, very impressive, and he didn't even play hardly any mid. He played half back, played in the wing. He could play anywhere. He even jumped up and spoiled. He played like a tall man. Now, uh, Luke Jackson scored 98. Um, it wasn't his best game, okay? And as a non-Luke Jackson owner, uh, I was so relieved, okay? Because um, uh, last week, the pain, okay, seeing him score 175 was so much. <laughs> I couldn't sleep all night just thinking about it. Anyway, uh, he scored 98. The owners wouldn't be upset because it's still 100, all right? It's still a good, it's still a good game. Uh, but the non-owners will be very happy that he didn't go 175 again. I mean, you don't expect 175 every week. Uh, going further down, actually, Jordan Clark. I want to talk about Jordan Clark. Uh, 119. Uh, that's a good score. Uh, I'm going to show you his previous two scores before this one. Now, Jordan Clark, his price at 461k. With his score today, uh, break even at 34, he's probably going to be about 500k, just under. Um, his previous scores... 108, 119, uh, that, that's good scoring, okay, and now a 119 again, so that's three weeks in a row, he's gone over 108, uh, it's, it's a huge scores, uh, he's doing better than like uh, some of the primos are doing right now, uh, the problem with Clark is uh, the defensive position uh, demands a player that can go a 120 plus this year, I think, because there are so many good defenders, uh, you got Whitfield coming in soon. Uh, look, he's going at about the same pace. But Clark and Whitfield are virtually on par right now. They're as good as each other. Uh, Clark feeds off uh, Ryan and their tall defenders. The pass, the, Clark's got to run and carry. And uh, he runs all day. Uh, very good player. He's got a new position this year. Uh, last year, he was halfback. Uh, this year, he's back pocket. Uh, for some reason, usually the back pocket's no good, but for Clark, back pocket's the best position for him. Thanks to kick-ins. Uh, even today, uh, I saw Ryan, he said, you, you go and take it. <laughs> but the thing is, when Clark kicks it, he kicks it to Ryan anyway, so they're, they're just uh, getting extra points. Now, is there anyone else that's um, super good relevant at 3-0? Uh, let's go down. Well, there is. There's Nat 5. Okay, now what are you going to do with Nat 5? Uh, Nat 5 is nearly 300k. Uh, when you've got a 300k player, you don't want him scoring 69s and 70s. Okay, this is, uh, and being subbed out. But it, although he, he wasn't subbed out, he played the whole game, scored a 69. Uh, he went out, he actually, efficiency was good, 76%. Uh, it's just, I don't think he's going to be a keeper in a forward line. He's not going to be a cash cow. He's just uh, stagnating. Uh, I think it's time to move him on, okay? Even if he scores 100 next week and you've moved him on, you've done the right thing, okay? Better to get a rookie there, so, and clear up the 200k in cash. Uh, you want to you want, you want to start building your team now. You don't want to have these players sitting in your team scoring 69, 70s. Uh, now, in Frio, is there anybody else? I think that's about it at Frio. Now, let's move on. Actually, there's Jeremy Sharp, 70. That's what I mean. Your sharp scoring 71 is a 123k player, and five scoring 69 is a 300k player. There's a big difference there. So uh, sometimes it's better just to get the uh, 123k players. Now, w actually, there's one more player, Draper. Uh, he's on the bubble next week. He scored a 68. Uh, last week, he didn't score much. It was 30-odd, okay? So it wasn't much last week, but this week, 68. Uh, could be a good option in our, in our defences, uh, next week, we might get Warner in here as well. So between Warner and Draper, you can probably pick both or just one of them. Uh, I'll probably go for the Warner option, but Draper's still not too bad. Now, we go to Adelaide. And uh, there's something happening at Adelaide. Uh, there's a 0-4 and four, or 0-3. I don't know. They're, they've lost a, bit, a few games. Now, Rory Laird, uh, he's a gun, all right? But he's 650K. And next to him is Matt Crouch. He's 490K. He's scoring as much. He's actually scored more than lead this year, okay, in total points. Uh, Matt Crouch, if you started him, uh, you've done so well. Uh, and if you got him at 490K, 
you've done really well because um, he's going to be up 50k now. He's going to get it about six, about five, five forty. Uh, probably too late now to jump on Crouch uh, because now you've got other options. Okay, now now you can go for other players like um, uh, the boys from Gold Coast. Uh, there's a few of them there, the Took Millers types. So uh, just if you got Crouch, just good luck. Okay, you've done so well. Now going further down. Uh, Chris Burgess, 72. I'm really liking what I've seen with Chris Burgess. I wish I started him. Now, we go to um, further down, and everyone's got a problem with this player, uh, Jordan Dawson. And now, check out the fantasy points. It's 100. 100 fantasy points. Last week, it was 117. His, his fantasy game is off the roof, okay? He's getting his hands on the ball. He had 19 kicks and 8 handballs. He's getting, he's getting the pill. He's getting everything. There's one, one, one small problem. He went at 48% disposal efficiency again. This is one of the best kicks in football. Uh, he's kicking the football like it's a basketball. <laughs> Something's happened to him. I don't know what's wrong. Um, what are you going to do with him? I mean, if he's out of form, you, you would say, I'm going to get rid of him. Uh, he's not getting the ball. But he is. He's getting the ball more than what than what uh, Crouch is getting it. Uh, Crouch, 28 touches. Uh, Dawson, 27 touches. But most of them are kicks. So he's getting, he's getting the pill. Uh, let's have a look at his scoring and his break-even. Well, in round one, he scored 82, and you were upset, okay? In round two, he scored 96. You were still upset, okay? You weren't even happy with the 96. Well, this week, he scored a 68. So, so you should have been happy with the 96. Just come on down. Now, uh, something wrong with him, but he's nearly there, okay? He's got, his price is going to drop, plummet. Uh, break-even... Where is the break even? Where's the break even here? Uh, break even of 152. He's going to drop about 40k this week. Uh, so it's going to be about 600k. But then that 68 is going to be in a scoring cycle for two more weeks. He might, if he keeps scoring the way he's scoring, he's going to be about 500k. Um, do you jump off now just to get another 100k? What do you do? What do you do now? What, what advice can I give you? Um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I play the game differently to you, okay? If he was my player, uh, I wouldn't have even got last this long. I would have got rid of him after probably round two uh, because I play reckless, okay? Um, it would have been a bad move. I mean, you saw what happened with Young. You trade out Young and he scores a 130. It can happen to Dawson as well. Uh, when you trade him out, and if you see him score 140s and 130s, you have to have no regrets. That's the only problem, okay? Because if you have regrets... Um, you're not going to enjoy it. So you just got to say, I don't want him. Uh, if he scores 150, good luck. I've got no regrets. Then it's not a problem. Um, would you get him back again later on at 500k? Well, probably you would. Okay, so it's up to you. Okay, uh, I can't give advice on this one because uh, we, we, were, we were different people. Okay, so uh, it's hard to tell, especially if you left it this late. Uh, 40k now is a lot of money. Okay, that's, that's huge. Um, he plays Melbourne next week. He should play well against Melbourne, surely, at Adelaide Oval. Anyway, uh, something to, to think about. Now, is there anyone else here at Adelaide that's worth mentioning? Uh, well, not really. Well, uh, McHenry was going nuts in the first quarter, and then, um... The nuts stopped. <laughs> he didn't go nuts anymore. They're like the nuts. So he, he stopped. He stopped eating them. And that's pretty much it. There's nobody else here uh, of any interest. We now go to my team. Now, on my bench this week, uh, I've got Matt Rowell. I've got Green. So I've got two big boys, okay? Uh, I know a lot of you also have two big boys. Maybe maybe one. Okay, so when you got two Two of your best players, virtually, especially Green, okay, and and, and the weapon. Um, I'm expecting to drop in ranks this week, okay. So I just don't want too much damage. If I can hold my rank, I'll be so happy because um, uh, the chances are with two players, two guns out, and there are some teams out there that have no one out, okay. Um, the chances are I'm going to drop in ranks, okay. So uh, we're just hoping to hold and to start the week. We've done okay. We've had Sheasel go 128, Powell at 92, Ryan at 130, Sorong at 125, and Crouch at 110. So we're happy with that. Plus, we've had a few more. Uh, our lowest score 
is actually Carroll, 65. Uh, and that's that's huge. Because uh, last week, our lowest score was like 48. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at our matchups. Who are we playing this week, okay? Back to matchups. I'll give you a, a small shout out to the players I'm playing against. Now, Dr. Uh, DR, or well, Supercoach of DR in his group, I'm playing against Dan, okay? You'd know uh, Dan, the Dashing Donkeys, okay? So uh, it's a close tussle there. Um, Scott Father, Cup One, playing the Golden Child, okay? Josh's team, and looks like it's going to be, well, looks like I might be a little bit ahead here, but just cover down. Now, Scott Father, Cup Two. Uh, Angeline, okay, we've got FASD Warriors, okay, and um, uh, her team seems to be uh, struggling this week as well, but it doesn't mean that she won't catch it, she's a strong player, okay, so she should come back. Now, Scott Father Legends, playing as MJ, uh, MJ's got a few players rested on the bench, he's, the score's hidden, okay, so he's going to have a big score still. Now, going further down, uh, who else is here? Scott Father Cup 3, we've got playing as Yanko, my friend Yanko. And we're going to have a close one. Now, Yanka was projected to score 2,000 at the start of the week. So, luckily, or well, unluckily for him, he's dropped a little bit. So, let's hope that Yanko can increase his score. Now, uh, Derek, so what do you reckon? Uh, going at 18-13. So, it's a tough week for Derek. So, hopefully, uh, he can boost his score up. Now, what's going on here? Scott Father Cup 4, Ruben Ginbys. So what, what's happened? They just come down. Let's have a look at Ruben Gimby's. Why is his score so low? He's got pink. Oh, we forgot to mention pink. He had a shocker. Okay, but that score's going to go off. Why is your score so low? Are you hiding a player here somewhere? What's? He's having a bad week. He's got big boys out. He's got Miller out and Whitfield out. He's got two big boys out as well. But let's hope that the um, Ru uh, Ruben's Gimby's can have a big Big uh, Saturday and Sunday, okay? Just come at the L. Now, I've lost the rest. What happened? Anyway, looks like um, my screen's gone. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you for joining. And remember one thing. It's nice to be important. But it's important to be nice. Ciao for now. That's all, folks.